Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Socio Psycho, and today I bring you State of Decay. This is a action RPG simulator by Undead Labs, and it is a zombie style based game from a third person world where you need to survive the apocalypse. It is very important to note that the first playthrough you do in this game, whether you spend an hour, half hour, two to four hours, wherever you first go, for your first little bit. It is going to be very annoying, very difficult, and may even make you cry, feel highly stressed, or just plain out annoyed before you even find your niche. It does a really poor job of giving a tutorial, and so the first thing I want to make sure I point out is the fact that starting the game base off is going to be a little rough for just about anybody. Now I usually play games on the hardest settings, or at least the second hardest of settings, and when I found issues and frustration in the game, and I have high tolerance and great patience threshold, whether you have as well or not, it is very important to note that the first time playing through it is going to be very annoying before you find out. Now with that said, is this game bad or is it good and where is the line drawn? Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what it has to offer, and we will start by going into the options menu. When we go into the graphics here, you have a wide variation of screen resolutions and aspect ratios, which is nice, your V-Sync and Gamma. It's pretty simplistic in the options that it offers you, unfortunately, as this game originally came out on Xbox 360 and is a port. Another thing worth noting is, does it actually do good, does it stand up, and will it be worth your time? But graphics in the game actually do look decent. It's not anything that will really tax or break your computer, as it does run on 60 frames per second with ease. Now and again, it does drop to about 48 to 55 in some spots, but for the most part, it stayed at 60 frames with no issue. Now, when we go into the sound settings here, as you can see, it's very really nice to have the music, the voice, and the sound of the game split up into different sliders. The music of the game isn't anything that's really propelling, but it's not annoying. It does have this environmental feel of apocalyptic, but not horror. It's just more as a nice melody of an elevator style music rather than anything that really grabs your attention and throws you into the world even more. The voice acting of the game actually is quite well done and it's something that we will show you in time. As far as the sound of the weapons, the zombies, or anything else go, the weapons sound actually quite well, the vehicles sound good, but the zombies are about basic. They don't really sound anything terrifying and very rarely do they even scare you or spook you unless they just somehow manage to sneak up behind you. The sound doesn't apply or benefit and give anything additional to the zombie's capability. When we go into the game settings, now as you can see there's a large variation of mouse sensitivity controls, as well as the fact that it was for your Xbox, so it will have controller support in case you want to hook up your controller to it. As we go into control configuration here, what is nice is that you can rebind all the keys with no difficulty, and they also have them split up into different sections. So if you're looking for a very specific spot, you don't have to scroll through every single one, you can find where you're going in the subsection, which is very nice. Now also it does have leaderboards, but it doesn't have a multiplayer or co-op option. So leaderboards, not really my huge thing, but if it's something that you do enjoy to replay and try to really strive, and you know, it has that. So. What is the game basically, and it is a survival game. So when we actually go into the game, as you can see here from the UI, it's very simple, doesn't cloud you up all much. The home stats is only going to show when you're inside the base. It shows your morale, your resources, your influence, and the population that you have at the base. At the bottom left, it has the blue bar and red bar. Blue is your stamina. The more you run, the more you're carrying. While you run, the faster it will go down. You're attacking with melee weapons, it will go down. Now, there are items in the game, such as food, as you can see in my inventory, that will replenish this. You have your minimap and a health bar. It's very simplistic. It's nice that it doesn't cloud you or really get in the way with a large interface, as it doesn't need to. It has basically what it has, minimal style. But when we go into the resources of the base, as you can see, we're a bit far in here, there are different towers. Now, this home, one I would say I'm pointing over is a home bar, the others are outposts. Now we'll go over what outposts are in a moment, but first let's describe more of the home aspect as the game is a survival simulation, as you will require and need to require certain resources and able to survive. Now as you can see here in our stockpiles, we have food, medicine, ammunition, construction materials, and fuel. 
Each day these go down. My biggest gripe is with the construction materials, as you lose so many of them daily with really no reason or cost. It's pretty much like the equivalent of saying, "Oh no, we're out of toilet paper. Now we're all going to die because nobody can wipe their ass." It's kind of ridiculous that you use that much construction equipment while the rest is all pretty much easy. Fruit is the main thing, really, and you don't really need to worry about it too much if you create a garden. You end up producing more food than you do eating it, and medicine doesn't really diminish unless you don't have a medical center, which would probably influence that. Now, up top in the status, you can see your population, how many laborers you have, how many bed spaces you have. So we have 11 population, but room for 24. That means we could replace some of our building structures in our layout. So this is the ideal layout of our buildings. You have stockpiles, kitchens, all these different buildings that you can create. And in these different buildings, you can actually upgrade certain bonuses. Now, as you can see here, if you have a big meal cooked in the kitchen, it will increase everybody's vitality. When it comes to a radio room, you can sort of ask her to look for different options, fuel, ammunition, food, or other survivors. These actions do take influence, and influence is gained in different ways, but the issue is you don't have to worry about influence too much. Plenty of influence throughout the game to where making decisions like this are not an issue. Your machine shop doesn't offer too much of a variety in what you're able to craft. This is basically the entirety of a crafting system here. It just adds a little bit more explosions, but the way the combat is, which we'll get into later on, it's not all that big of a deal, and not something you really need to worry about. Your medical center, which will treat minor colds and make sure your medicines are completely taken care of, and your garden. Now, some of these buildings can be upgraded more, but you need a library. And the unfortunate thing is, while the base seems to have more space, it limits you to predetermined spots upon where you place things down. But the fact that it really limits you on what you're able to construct, crafting, or building-wise, as well as where you're able to place them and how you're able to manage your resources, kind of diminish that. And we'll go more into that later. But what I want to show you is the map. And as you start out, you can see the world is very large. Now this can be a good thing and a bad thing because the level design of the game is actually very well done. The towns feel like towns and the apocalyptic feel of the zombies taking over do infer that. The world has a lot of attention to detail in small areas when it comes to level design. Inside the buildings, how they look, they have grocery stores, workshops, and just a whole bunch of different atmospheres upon where the world feels houses versus townhouses, they've done a really good job in how the level design is. Only gripe that I may even have about level design is that it's too large, ironically, because if you have a mission that is across the other side of the map, you spend a good five minutes or two to three minutes driving to that location to be able to grab that, meaning that it's probably the best idea to relocate your base into a new area as soon as possible. So as you can see with up top here, this is where you start originally, and you make your way down to a first town. Now, in a first town, you'll go through some quest lines, and eventually, it'll open up more quest lines in a south town. So, if you establish your base in the top, you're going to have a long drive. Now, you could establish your base in the middle in a farmland and kind of have an area access to everything. It's really your choice. I found more personally that's easier just to move my base to a south as well that's where the story progresses to, and you might as well just set up safely. Minus the world being a little bit large at times, and disconnected from how you interact with it, the resource gathering and how outposts work in juncture to relating to the world and how you interact with the world is very important. Now when you're scavenging about in these different buildings, you have two options. You can slowly search and wait for the bar to time up, or you can hold down shift. Now, this is a sort of stealth element aspect to a game, and probably the strongest stealth aspect it has to it. Because if you rush through while searching, if there are any zombies nearby, they will hear that and they will come to that location because you're making a lot of noise. Now, sometimes there may not be a lot of zombies, and they can easily be removed, or sometimes you may end up unearthing an entire legion of zombies and just doom yourself. Really making a lot of noise in that regard is the quickest and most easiest way to get yourself killed. 
It doesn't mean that you should never rush through an area, but there are consequences. Now, when it comes to also resource gathering and management, you do have the option to call in a list of commands from your base. As the story progresses, you get the allowance to do more things. When you're searching through these cabinets, you will find what are called resources. These are large aspects and they go into your medicine, your construction, your food, everything like that. You have two options. You can break them down, which will destroy that from being a usage to your community and just a usage to a character that you're playing at. Or you can call for scavengers or take it back to base yourself. Now a scavenger will come out and they'll pick it up and they'll go back. And as you can see in a list of things you have available, whether it be establish an outpost, relocate home base, call in an airstrike, a vehicle delivery, or speed up a construction, you have these availabilities which cost influence. And as we said, influence is not difficult to get. And influence is mainly gained by bringing in resources and completing missions. It's not all that difficult. The outpost can actually backfire because as you can see, I'm showing you on a map here, there are neutral survivor groups. And the issue that I found is if you put a outpost next to them thinking, okay, I'm gonna put an outpost here and I'm gonna try to protect them from any rampaging zombie hordes, what happens is there's a good chance, which has happened to me, when your outpost attacks the zombie horde, they'll also hit with friendly survivors and you'll lose trust with them. That can affect you in not being able to get them as survivors or losing favor and options with them. But when we look into the zombies and what we actually have to worry about from the world, as you can see here, this huge gaggle of zombies, we can easily defeat it with the usage of one of our special abilities, which is calling in artillery support from the military. Now, this will give us access to a artillery marker, which we can throw out and the zombies will then rush onto that because it's making most noise and heat and then the artillery will fall down and they'll be dispersed. There are different types of zombies in this game and the most basic are the hordes and the you know common zombies. But there are different types such as feral zombies, which are a lot stronger but faster. They're more about speed and agility rather than anything else. They're not invulnerable, I and mean, they're certainly not the toughest, but they are and have the capability of being dangerous, but you can easily defeat them with a weapon as you saw. Now there's also bigger and fatter guys. These easiest way, if you don't want to waste a bunch of ammunition, is just to deal with them with a car. As soon as you knock them over and run them into them, just run them right over and that deals with that. There is a small variation of the monsters but how they interact with the world are not all that impressive. And it is nice that they do have like SWAT style zombies that you can't shoot because they're all armored up. And so you have to go melee with them. But the fact that these different types of creatures are more as rare encounters rather than something that you see leading army hordes or something you see as a special event. As there are no real special events and the different types of monsters, whether it be even a bloated zombie, which when it gets close to you or you hit it, it will blow up in this poisonous gas of like acid type stuff. These different types of zombies do offer a little bit of variation in how you handle. But the sad part is the fact that the enemy doesn't use them as leadership or powerful weapons in how they fight against you. The enemy does have two mobile ways of fighting against you. They have infestations of houses or buildings, and they have hordes. Now, hordes are pretty easy to deal with via the outpost, because when a horde gets in the range of an outpost, the outpost will trigger, and the horde will be eliminated by the traps of that outpost. The unfortunate fact is, whether it be an infestation of a home, or a randomly popping up horde that's on a move, they do not have any leadership or any real difficulty in getting rid of them. The majority of hordes you come across, you'll come across while driving. And you have two options. Just ignore them because hitting them will damage your vehicle or just run them down. It's as simple as that. They aren't all that difficult. And the fact that there are different types of specialty zombies that I told you about, the ones that blow up and create gas or the ones that are really big and scary, they don't have these as leaders in the army 
that move about and patrol. If they did, it would add a much more difficult and variational aspect to a game. When we have infestational houses, it's the same way. All you have when it comes to infestation houses are what they call screamers. Screamers are not dangerous or difficult to deal with, but zombies are attracted by noise and the screamers will yell and they'll make noise and they'll attract any zombies in the area. But yet again, this is another thing that is not all that much of an issue because it's very easy to deal with with just a vehicle or just a gun. The game is not overly complicated in its difficulty because it doesn't have a depth of how it places the zombies together. It doesn't have different types of powerful zombies leading the smaller zombies in a collaborational way which would make it more difficult on you. Whether you're doing a mission that is to clear a infested house or you're just doing it on your own because an infested house is nearby, the difficulty is not all that much. And unfortunately, the fact that these do pop up quite frequently, they don't have that much difficulty or variation in what you're going to fight, as well as the fact that they usually pop up in the exact same uh, places again and again. Now, as you can see, before I did this in a truck in the daylight, now I'm doing it again at nighttime, but it's the same building, the same location. And this has the continuational thing. Whether it be a mission or an infestation, a barricade, whatever it is, it is a repeat of the same thing. Now, does that mean the game is bad and it doesn't deserve to be played? That's variable. That's one of the lines drawn in the sand. Because while it can be entertaining for a short period of time, it does get old because it doesn't have that level of depth like I was telling you about. It doesn't have zombie generals. And the majority of the hordes that do progress through, you can easily remove with the setting up of outposts. Now outposts are not difficult at all to actually set up. And when we go into a house, a building, whatever you want to set up an outpost at, the first thing you have to do is completely clear out the building. Now this is sort of stupid and sort of good because it makes you have to clear out and survey and make sure it's fully secure before you put an outpost in. I mean, you just call in for an outpost and an outpost will pop up. But it's also kind of stupid because if you're putting up an outpost in that building, then wouldn't you already gain all the supplies? Now I can see why it's like that because you don't want abuse. You don't want to set up an outpost to quickly scavenge all the resources, close the outpost, go to the next building and do the same thing. This makes sense in that regard, but I would have liked to see some sort of middle ground, maybe a longer cooldown timer even. You know, 10 minute cooldown timer, 15 minute cooldown timer. I would have been fine with that with the if that meant that I could instantly put up an outpost inside a building that was at least clear of zombies but not loot because that way I wouldn't have to spend 20 minutes going back and forth trying to clean out all the loot in the building before I could set up an outpost. It's just a small little inconvenience more than anything else. And as the outposts do lay down traps, but they only affect hordes. They don't affect actual just one or two zombies or even a group of five or six zombies. If they're not connected and noted as a horde, the outposts will not do anything to them. So if you can see on the map here, this outpost just attacked the horde that walked into it and it got destroyed. This is good that the outposts do that, but the limitations that they have on it are a bit frustrating. The fact that the zombie hordes are eliminated is good because it helps protect your base. But the fact that the zombies will continually respawn, even in buildings around your base that are already cleared of resources or anything else, is just more annoying. End up cleaning out the same buildings again and again and again. If you're being chased or need to hide immediately, and you're away from base, you're like, okay, well, this building I already cleared out. You go back in it, and it's got five or six zombies in it. The whole point of you hiding into a building because you have next to no health has just been mute. Now, I'm not saying that occasionally a zombie won't ro roam about and run about, but the fact that zombies can just easily roam and run easily through the territory that you've already cleared is a bit annoying. But the combat of the game and how you actually fight is decent. You have different weapons, and majority of the game you will be fighting melee, but the weapons do feel and sound very good. The shotgun, not my favorite, but it does have some kick behind it. It. 
and the AK has definitely a lot of recoil onto it, so you definitely need to make sure you do smaller boosts. And as you could see here when we hit this armored guy before, he wouldn't be taken down by bullets so we had to do it manually. The assault rifle, one of my favorites. It does a lot of damage, has good range, feels good, and has minimal kickback. The weapons are satisfying, and it's up to you not to try to rush off and use because you do have ammunition, and I found myself very rarely, if at all, using weapons. It's not too often I would take even a weapon out on a mission with me because it would take up another space in my inventory, which I could do with loot. I'm a bit of a loot whore. That's just me. You might want that weapon for additional safety, but if you're careful and slow and quiet, that's not going to be an issue where you get overrun too much, as well as the fact there are plenty of vehicles to hide in and ways to get around being overwhelmed. The game is more frustrating than it is straight out annoying, but the weapons do feel good, and they do have this sort of kick, so when you do need to fall back on them, it is satisfying. But like I said, ammunition is not something that is just overly abundant, so you will need to manage your resource in that regard. They all feel good, and they all sound good. It's not an issue in how they work. Now ironically though, as you can see on the minimap, when the weapon does shoot, it creates a wide range of sound noise, but I found that it doesn't really attract zombies like you would think it would, like you see in movies all the time, or TV shows, or whatever. It doesn't actually attract zombies from wide over, so you can be shooting a shotgun, and yet no zombies are really making their way over to me. And the one small issue that I have found that I come across now and again, not too common that it becomes an issue of game breakability, but it is a bug, and because this is a review, I must list everything. Sometimes, zombies will just be phased out almost. Or there'll be occasionally a zombie that's invisible and it'll attack you. Now you just swing in its general direction, and you'll be able to kill it. Now these are small little issues that are easily to be fixed. Whether you get stuck in a certain spot because now the, like, the wall decides that it wants to become part of you, and you have to exit the game and load back in the game, or you just run away from the zombies a little bit and get them out of that little phase bubble where they're at where they couldn't be injured. Whatever the issues were, they don't happen enough to be game breaking, but they are important to list that they are an issue. It's like I said, it's not an issue that happens all the time, but it is something that does happen now and again. So it's something to keep note of, but not something you really have to worry about or see too often, hopefully. And this ties us into the missions and what you'll mainly be doing in the game. And it's more repetitive rather than anything else. Now the main reason when you play this game is that when you start the game up, it's really going to be frustrating. You're not going to really understand what's going on. It has a really poor next to none tutorial and it's going to be really frustrating to a point of stressful, angry, or crying depending on your characteristics or personality. But what's annoying is that while the story has a main storyline and progression, the side stories and the side storyline is just a repeat and rewash of the same story over and over again. The morale in the base is low on one person, so you have to take them out to attack and clean out a building. Like I said earlier, this building you've already cleaned out four or five times on other missions. The missions that they use don't rotate on different buildings around your surrounding, but they use the same building, the same location. It's a bit unfortunate they do that. And whether it be a morale issue of quest, or hey, go save this person, go save that person, you only really have five or six different types of quests that they use as fillers, which are continually reused over and over again. Now, the game is entertaining, and it's very interesting to save us about a game, the fact that it is very addictive, but at the same time, it's very boring. Because there is a line, you first play it, and the first time you play it, it's frustrating because you're trying to figure out everything because it does a really poor job of describing what's happening to you, and your interface, and everything else. Once you find your niche, then you play, and you're like, okay, I got everything down, I know what I'm doing, I'm going to expand, I'm going to uh, survey, and 
resource and grow and feel like I sort of own stuff. And then there's a line that's different for everybody where you come across and you say, okay, this is boring. I'm obviously not making any progress because there's no progress to be made in the game. And the side quests are just a recontinuational wash of the same stuff over and over again. Whether you are helping a grouping of survivors barricade their buildings up, which for the majority of the times they'll just stay inside. Once and again, they, if you manage to get one of the people outside, they will help a little bit. But for most of the times, I'm talking about 95% of the time, they will just stay inside the building and just barricade the walls up and you'll have to go outside and deal with all the zombies themselves. The zombies do not get injured on the barricades. They do not get injured from fall damage, they do not get injured from climbing over walls or even fenced walls, barbed wire. They take no real environmental damage, which is unfortunate. And it leaves these barricade missions really lackluster. It's the continuation of the same thing. You do two or three and you're like, okay, I get the main point of this. I understand what's going on. But then when you have to do 12 to 20 of them, it's such a repeat where you're just like, okay, I'm ready for something new. When will I get something new? And the main issue in a lot of these is that when you come to these areas, the allies will be just kicking zombies, not even killing them. They'll, the zombies will get sort of stuck in a way where they just continuously kick them up against a wall. All these things happen, and as you can even see with what I'm showing you, this is not replay footage of the same mission. This is a completely separate barricade mission in the same house, only a half hour apart. We already barricaded, we saved them up, I left, and now I came back again because the next mission was, hey, save us again because we need barricade and help again. The thing about having missions for strangers is nice, but the issue that comes down to it is the trust bar on these different groups that you do these missions for, the more trust they have, eventually they'll join your society. Before you can even get them fully up to a trust bar where they want to join your society, the majority of the time, they'll just leave. They'll pick up and leave, and you won't have anything. And the continuation of the missions, again and again, as you can see, search and rescue here, search and rescue there, help a friend. You take your people out and say, hey, I want you to go out and gather this resource. Or you'll come across a mission, and it's like, hey, why don't you find this person because he left, and he's, he did a survey mission, and he's lost. You can never send two people out to gather resources or have more than one person to come with you on a mission. You're very limited in what you're able to do and interact with when it comes to actually your own society. You don't even have your own character. You play among different characters in a different game. As one goes on, gets injured, gets tired, as time goes by, you can switch to another one. But the way the NPCs are is that once you start a certain mission, even if you have a companion with you, they take off, they go back to town. So you start a mission, and instead of a guy that you took from base to help you out, still stays there as your companion and helps you out, he runs back to base. You can't really do anything with your NPCs, and they're very needy. They always need to be saved, they always need help, they always need guidance. It's really frustrating, but they can't really do anything on their own. If you were able to control a bunch more NPCs and say, that the more NPCs you took out increased your noise level so you end up you can't really sneak or because you're traveling in a large group so that means you get attacked by more zombies. Whatever the case in balance which is more impossible to do, they don't even entertain the idea. And in this situation where you're helping out your neighbors to defend an outpost, it would have been nice to be able to bring three to five, maybe six even, depending on you know the limitations of balance to this area to ha kind of hold down and help out. But instead, you're limited to sort of just doing it yourself and not having much use or help with your rest of your community. The problem with this is the fact that it does not offer any community or sense of community in your own world. If they allowed you to have more troops with you and you wanted to clear out a house infestation and they made a general, like I said earlier, if they made the infestations of the houses and the hordes that travel stronger or have a general leading them of the specializational zombies that they have, this would have allowed a more difficult task that would have been represented easier by access to more people. 
Now the game does have good voice acting like I've said before, and we'll let you hear that for yourself now. Helping our neighbors when they need it. Marshall's seen some pretty bad times, and some good. But my family's always done our part to help her through the bad and make the good even better. The way I see it, this whole thing is just another bad time. And I just know my daddy and granddaddy are looking down at me right now saying, Raimundo, you've got to do the right thing. So that's what I'm doing. Just helping out any way I can. You need supplies, I can arrange a trade. You need a car, I can hook you up. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. You've probably got a lot on your mind. You don't need old Ray talking your ear off. Tell you what though, give me a... The unfortunate part is you really have no access in the capability of where you place buildings, how your structure or infrastructure looks or is protected, as well as the fact of your, your building. So as we can see here, there is plenty of space to put more items down, more buildings, a library, a garage, whatever it is. But the fact is you are unable to. There is large open of area and large world, but you're not able to make any of that yourself. You're very limited by the lack of depth in this game. And while it may not be an issue because you're trying to survive, it does definitely hit you on replayability more than anything else. The first time through, it's not an issue. It's not something you think about or care about. And it's not something that breaks the game, but it's definitely something that hurts it in your availability to replay it, or more importantly, make it your own. And as you can see here, the fences would have been nice, even in that basic level of fences, being able to upgrade the fences, maybe add electricity to them, maybe add a little bit more depth to it. But as it is, the zombies can easily just spawn anywhere around your base, as the outposts don't attack single zombies, and they can easily climb over the fences without getting damaged or injured in any manner, and then sneak up inside your base. Now, is this something that happens, or something that is common to happen that zombies end up sneaking into your base? No. But has it happened and can it happen? Yes. Now also another thing that's a bit unfortunate to talk about, you have a farm. You can create a farm which is nice, it supplements your food and people eat with food and there's no issue. But when it comes to construction materials, like I said earlier, you're using so many construction materials as well as you're using so much ammunition. But you cannot make ammunition. Now I know to make a bullet you need black powder because black powder uses the discharge and it ignites the bullet from the capsule outward. So you would need black powder. But what about all the metal and the sheet metal and the bullet canisters? There is a whole world of metal but you're not able to scavenge any of it, not able to clean up or move. If you want to clean this roadway you can't move any of these vehicles, you can't move any of the objects of the world. You can't do anything in the world to kind of make it your own. Everything is cemented in. And this unfortunately makes you feel more like a tourist. Now ironically, because the combat is so good, that for a long while you don't even care. But like I said, there is a line where you ask, I want more. I want more from my game. I want to be able to play more, I want to be able to do more. And unfortunately, looking at this from a long term aspect, as a review channel should, this does not add up. It doesn't give you the availability to interact with your world in any real way that gives you substance to meet the needs of your resources or defense in the environment. As well as the most basic fact that you can't even destroy your environment. Something as simple as fences, whether it be metal or wood, cannot be destroyed or even dented by your vehicles. This is unfortunate really. It would have been nice to have a bit more of a physics system into it. And I'm not saying that as a big fat zombies have been known to climb over fences. I'm not saying that those fences need to completely smash under the weight of it. But it would have been nice to be able to have sort of a damage meter. The only real depth they have in the game comes from a combat system that goes by a star basis. Just basically the more you do with a character, the more they'll upgrade. And you have an option to pick a few specializations in weapon and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Everything else you really have no control over or whatnot. It just comes down to the more you shoot your weapon, the more you'll gain experience. The more you fight, the more you run, you'll gain cardio. Simple as that. And you have a journal log which is more annoying than anything else because it doesn't really tell you anything of use and so much gets thrown into it. It's more like an encyclopedia of what's been happening 
rather than any you know anything of real use or value. There's no information in it that's all that amazing. Influence, as I said earlier, is your main currency in the game. And to gain influence, all you have to do is just loot items and put them in your supply locker or do quests. Once you complete these tasks, you'll gain influence, which then you can use on different things. You can take somebody with you, you can call in special favors, or you can pull out items that you've already put in before because, hey, I need more medicine to heal my wounds, or I need a silencer, or whatever it is. I need a bigger backpack. Whatever the case is, the fact that you can put these items into your locker and gain influence with your base, but you can't put items into a locker of a stranger's home base, another scavenger team that's not your base, a group of survivors elsewhere. You try to put items in their chest and it won't increase their trust, which doesn't make sense. If you're giving somebody resources, they would trust you. You are giving them a valuable commodity, which is very important, whether it be supplies of any type, weapons, ammunition, medicine. I mean, they should have a value difference on what you place in there. But unfortunately, because there's no real way to gain trust outside of doing missions, and the only way you get missions is periodically, what happens is if a outpost of strangers is not story related, they'll end up just disappearing. I've had two friendly outposts in this area around my defense structures. I've almost had them maybe about 80% to trust level. And what happens is they just pick up and leave. For no reason, they'll just walk away and you lose all that trust. Not having the availability to increase your population because the only way you can do that is by gaining complete trust with another group of strangers and then incorporating them into you. But the only way to incorporate them into you and gaining trust is by doing missions and the missions are periodically. It's really frustrating. You know, another annoying aspect of it is the fact that there is no diplomacy mission. You cannot use influence plus diplomacy and your food resources that is value based of the whole community, not an individual, in regards to try to bargain or trade with another group. You go up to them and be like, hey, for 200 influence, I'm able to make you trade with me, and here's 40 materials of medicine, and now I get 20 trust. And it's not like, it's not even that. There's no diplomacy in it. And even if you wanted a simplistic, an easier way to be able to have a gain of trust, you could just go up to them and maybe one of the options in talking to them is, hey, we're low on medical supplies or we're low on food. Can you give us 20 food? And you're like, yeah, sure thing, no problem. I'll give you 20 food. And then you get 10 trust. That is a very simplistic yet another way that would allow you to build a society and make the world feel a little bit more like yours rather than you just being a tourist. But it, like again, the game does not have that level of depth in it. There are no solo survivors. When you're searching through houses, you don't come across somebody who is hiding in a closet or in a garage or whatever the case is. And they're like, oh yeah, I'll join you. Sure, that sounds like safety. The only way to gain people is by the predetermined missions. And it's really unfortunate. And it makes the game feel empty rather than a survival. Because when you run into somebody in the world who else is, you know, down on their luck, it's like, hey, cool, we're part of the same world, rather than, well, the only way for me to increase is to do these X amount of tasks, and it's just annoying. The world doesn't feel safe, and you never have a sense of progression, unfortunately, in the game. When you go into a building that you've already cleared out, even one that's behind the base, what I'm showing you here is a building behind the base. I've cleaned it out. There are outposts, there's my defense structures and my main base so zombies can't walk past it. And it's not just one or two. The whole compound is already really infested with zombies. This unfortunate thing that you don't have the availability to really clean out or progress through the world is what's annoying because if you start in your town and you're like, okay, I have all these buildings around the town, I'm going to clean out all these buildings, I'm going to feel like I've progressed, I feel like I'm going to kill these zombies, and it doesn't. The zombies continuously respawn again and again. And a mixture of that with the fact that even if you clean out a building, you're going to have to clean it out again later, does it make you feel progressed or satisfied even in how you're progressing through the world? It's not a city. You don't have 2 million people, 100,000 or 500,000 people. This is a small town and small farming community. So even if it was 14 to 20,000 people in this town, I would respect the game more if it had a set number of zombies 
rather than just a continuously respawning number of zombies. And this is really why it does it, because it's afraid of making you feel bored. And that's the biggest issue with the game. It's so afraid and distrustful of you as a person to find your own entertainment in the game that it wants to make sure via even annoyance or risk of annoyance that it will continuously respawn zombies so you always have something to fight. There's always buildings to clean out, there's always enemies, there's always something. But the issue is with this, the fact that you feel unprogressed. When zombies continuously respawn again and again and again, you have no progression in how you interact with the world, which is unfortunate. So they try to manage your enjoyment by saying, hey, kill all these zombies, keep killing all these zombies. But what really happens is they say, you're not actually going to feel like the world is yours or you're not even making a difference in the world. And this same concept is put to the test with vehicles. Now, it's nice to have a vehicle, you're in trouble, you're out running, and oh, okay, there's a vehicle. But a simple, a very simple workaround from having vehicles continuously respawning in the world to vehicles being a resource node rather than a something that just continuously respawns is very simple to do. Now, at your base, you have a garage. This garage will repair vehicles. This garage will fix up your vehicles and you can go from there. But vehicles respawn in the world. So you can damage and destroy how many vehicles you want and it won't matter because there'll always be more vehicles. If you are out in the middle of a farmland and you had no vehicle and you're like, okay, I need pickup, it would make more sense to call in a radio, lose maybe 50 of your influence, your currency, and have somebody drive out to you to pick you up. Why is that not feasible? There are missions where you have to save other people who are in distress. Why can't you call an aid and somebody will drive out to you and you have to wait it out or try to make it and they'll drive to you? That would have made much more sense and offered a lot more of a depth in the gameplay rather than just saying, well, cars are a freebie. They're one of your most powerful tools and assets because you can run them over and they are a resource which you never have to worry about running out of. You lose my respect, not because you don't have what I want in the game, but because by not having that, you're taking away enjoyment because you don't trust me to be able to manage my resources. You don't trust me to be able to handle situations on my own and you always want to give me a cop-out. It's a survival game, so it would make sense for vehicles to be a resource. Now, I've been ranting about that a little bit more, and that's perfectly fine because I want you to think about that. If you're in a field and you don't have a vehicle and you're surrounded by zombies, there is a stealth aspect to the game. You can crouch in bushes and hide. So wouldn't it make more sense to use the stealth aspect of a game that they've already put into the game more instead of just making it something that you barely use at all? Oh, I'm down to 20% health. I'm going to hide in a bush and wait for this patrol to pass one time in the entire game. Or make it something that seems more liable or feasible to actually use in the game. Now, this doesn't mean that the game is so simple because you can just use vehicles and weapons and everything else in between medicine and consumables that you won't die. If you're careless, you will die. There is a noise level to the game that if you're not smart about what you do, if you rush in, if you if you don't plan out or have the right equipment, you may just run into more than you can bite off. But really, like I said before, the main issue that you have to worry about in that regard is searching a house and causing a lot of noise. Now that screamer just made a lot of noise and there were no zombies to hear it. But when I made noise in the pantry, a bunch of zombies spawned in and made noise. Now this is, this is good and this is bad because it goes back to what I'm saying about just continuational zombies being respawned. This is good because it shows you what the failure of being stealthy and cautious will do to you, but it's bad because you don't have a sense of environment. If you cleaned out the houses around this house and you know there's no zombies and you rush in and you make a bunch of noise, there should be no zombies to come and get you. And it just continues to incorporate the stealth aspect on a base bare minimum level. But didn't go further into it, which is really unfortunate. And that's what I was whole trying to show you about this game. And so in conclusion about the entire game of how 
the world doesn't really feel too much like yours. The resources are sporadic and how much you use of what and how, oh, I need more of this, but yeah, I can't use anything in the world to make what I need is a bit unfortunate. Now, the game does feel good. Like I said, the weapons are very solid. They feel really good. Killing zombies is very satisfying, and it is a very addictive experience. And you will want to play and beat the entire game via the story. The story will kind of progress. You'll be like, okay, I want to play the story. I want to see what's going on here. I want to beat the game at least. But once you beat the game, then it comes down to, well, should I really play again? And where's the line of my annoyance versus what I'm able to do? For me personally, it doesn't offer a lot of depth or availability in replayability to warrant a continuation of replaying. The very large learning curve it takes in this game is not one that is difficult. The issue with the game when you first start off in the game, it's going to be very annoying. You're either going to be stressed, angry, or even cry, depending on your skill level and personality trait, before you find your niche in how to play. Back then with the fact that it doesn't have a good tutorial, describing exactly what's going on and what you need to do, and the fact that the game rushes you through the main story and you feel overwhelmed more than anything else. The game pushes you through at a very fast pace, trying to entertain you by giving you so much to do that you're drowning, it doesn't even realize or care that it's drowning you. And this is the most unfortunate thing. It is so concerned with not making a player board. It is so fearful of putting out so you don't get even the hint of boredom that it becomes overwhelmingly too much and you can't even interact or do what you want with the world. Now, once you find your niche and you play and you slow down the pace of a story and everything else isn't entertaining, yes, and you'll complete the game and the story. But then you'll find out at the end of the story, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it feels a little like, oh, really? That That's it? That's all that's going to happen? That's all it's going to show me? It's not the best ending. So if you're going to think, oh, well, I'm going to do this for a story alone, you know, I, I don't know about that one. And what really comes down to is replayability. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are happy to play this game again and again, and that's perfectly fine. But me personally, it doesn't have a depth or a draw into a world that would allow a sort of replayability because you're doing the same actions over again. Whether it's driving zombies over, rescuing X amount of people, cleaning out the same building five times, whatever quest it is, like I said, there are only a few side quests and they repeat them again and again. It's not an issue in how the game handles or plays, but it's an issue in how much content the actual game has. If this game was an MMO, it would fail horribly, because the fact of the matter is, the game plays great, but it has so little to it. It has a large system, but the systems don't connect to each other or really integrate options to add more levels of depth. So in the end, can I recommend this game? And it is a difficult game to recommend. And if you are easily angered, easily stressed, looking for something to take off the nerves, then probably not. This is probably not the game for you. But if you have time and money to spend and you don't mind getting upset, then perhaps this is for you. It's a difficult game and one that's definitely not for everybody. But not difficult because of the game mechanics, but difficult because of the pace of the game itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Socio Psycho, and I hope that this review has helped you in clarifying what you look forward to seeing in this game, as well as how it plays. It's one that's entertaining, but one that is missing a lot. Thank you for your time and viewership and your support. I'll see you next time.